Recently, my DeWalt planer has gotten a ton of use because almost all of my projects go through the planer at some point in time. It's gotten so much use that it came time to either replace the knives that came with the unit or upgrade to a helical cutter head. I did some searching around and I found a company that makes a helical cutter head replacement for the DeWalt 735, which is what I have. They also make some other models for different desktop planers, but this is the one that I went with for my model. I recently had a positive experience with the helical cutter head on an 8 inch jointer that I bought and did a review on a few months ago. So I was a little bit biased towards giving this a shot. It's a significant investment because the cost of the cutter head is around $500, which is a lot for a desktop planer and pretty much doubles your investment into this single piece of equipment. So today I'm going to be going through a brief overview of the installation complexity for actually installing this in your planer. I'll do a heads up comparison between the performance of the OEM knives versus the Shelix cutter head. And then finally, I'll provide my concluding thoughts on whether this is a good investment and should you consider it for your shop. I've included some timestamps in the description below so you can skip to the parts that are of interest. All right, let's go. Before we get started, I do want to mention that I am not sponsored by BirdTool. So this Shelix was purchased with my own money. So the opinions that you're going to hear throughout this video are mine alone and not at all influenced by any sponsorships. So the packaging comes with everything that you see pictured here. And let me start off by describing the difference between straight knives and a helical cutter. So straight knives are uh, a set of rotating sharp edges that make small cuts into the wood as you pass it in the, into the planer. The helical cutter, each one of those carbide inserts can be rotated individually, and the cutting action is not parallel to the cutting plane. So there is a cut and a shear motion that is taking place, which makes the cuts a lot smoother. So there's fundamentally different things happening between the two different cutting mechanisms. Now there's two different versions of this that you can buy. There is the full outer diameter version, which you see pictured here, which has to have all of the cutters removed in order for you to install it in the um, shaft opening of your planer. But Virtual does make a smaller version that you don't have to take all the inserts off of. The only drawback is that your preset measurements on your planer are no longer valid at that point. So I opted for the full OD version, so you see me here taking off all the cutters. It only added about 15 minutes to the project. I'm showing a few highlights of the installation here, not as a complete installation guide, but just to show the relative complexity of what's involved. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step explanation for how to do it, I'd recommend going and checking out Ben's video over at Meyer's Workshop. He's got a great tutorial of how to do this, and quite frankly, he does it better than I could anyway. So I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. The reason why I'm highlighting some of these installation steps is so that folks that are considering upgrading their cutter head understand some of the installation steps that are required to actually make this happen, because it's not trivial by any means. I wouldn't call it complicated, but if you're going to make this upgrade, you need to be comfortable removing drive chains and taking belts off of pulleys and removing some torsion springs because all of those things are going to be required in order to make this happen. If anything that you're seeing here is outside of your realm of comfort and you're still on the edge of whether or not you want to upgrade your cutter head, I'd really recommend checking out the Myers Workshop video so you can see a more in-depth guide of what's needed to do the installation, what tools are required, and just see if this is something within your capability or not. I, that might be a driving factor for some people's decision making. For me, it wasn't personally. I, I had the tools to get this done. I'm pretty handy with this type of stuff, but uh, certainly not trivial by any means. I mentioned earlier that I bought the larger OD version, which requires all the cutter heads to be removed. So one attention to detail as you're reinstalling these cutters is look to see where the marker is on the corner of the cutter. Here you see the BT, which I assume stands for bird tool. 
make sure as you're installing these cutters that you put all of those facing the same direction. That'll help you understand whenever you do need to go and rotate a cutter in the future, you can see which cutters have been rotated and if so, how many times. This will also give you an indicator of when a cutter needs to be replaced versus rotated. Overall, I would say it took me five minutes to remove all the cutters and then 10 minutes to put them back in. So I don't think that should be a driving force in any decision between the smaller diameter and a larger diameter. You're still having to do all of these same steps to get access to the drive shaft to pull everything out. So um, I wouldn't let that swing your decision one way or the other. For the heads up comparison, I'm gonna be looking at two major things. I'm gonna be looking at the noise output of the machine with the straight knives versus the um, helical cutter head, as well as the performance. I do know that the helical cutter head consumes a little bit more power, but that's not a key driver for me, so I'm not considering it in my review. In the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the decibel level of the noise in the room. I'm trying to get a baseline for the factory OEM knives, which seems to be hovering around 100 decibels, and seeing what happens whenever you actually run a piece of wood through the pointer. So the average sound level for the OEM knives was about 109 decibels and the max was 116. Now I'm going to repeat the process after I have changed out the cutters to the Shelix heel for cutter head. I'm making some marks on the wood because I run this through just before taking this video and the sound and the feeling coming from the planer was so different that I wasn't sure it was actually cutting. So. Uh, <laughs> I actually made marks on the on the wood just to make sure that it was cutting. But repeating the same process for the, uh, the helical cutter head, you can see the sound is quite a bit less. The sound is very different. I noticed quite a few, um, or quite a reduction in the vibrations as the wood was going through the machine. The noise reduction isn't significant enough to not wear ear protection. So in my mind, it's not really a driving factor. You can see here the average was about 102 decibels, the max was 112. So it was lower, but you'd still need hearing protection. The more significant thing for me is the difference in the actual cut quality. So here is what the final product would be. Let's say the cut quality was about a 6 out of 10. Mainly because you can see these long gouges in the wood that span the entire length of the plank of walnut. Now, these are not fresh knives, I do need to say that. But this also kind of is part of the problem of having a single fixed blade in your planer. You can't just rotate it and continue going. You have to replace the entire knife. And most of us aren't going to do that unless the damage is significant. So this is what a lot of my wood projects come out of my planer looking like, which causes me to spend a lot of time sanding on the back end. Now, I did think it was interesting the shape of the cuttings and how different they are relative to the helical cutter. So the straight knife produces these longer curly cuttings that are um, quite large. So more prone to block up any kind of dust extraction that you might have. Um, and you'll see in just a moment when we look at the helical cutter head, the cutting sizes are a lot smaller. So again, different cutting mechanisms, but the, the product of having a single knife produces the quality that you're seeing here once there's enough wear on it. Now. Contrast that with the Shelix. The, uh, of course, these are all brand new. It, yes, it was a little bit quieter, but the cut quality was phenomenal. Whenever I ran my hand across the, the face of this piece of wood, it felt like it was sanded at about 220 grit versus the OEM knives, which is probably 80 grit. So it's a much finer finish. There's no lateral striations like you sometimes get with straight knives and no gouges whatsoever. It did not eliminate the snipe. I tried to pick it up on camera. You'll see me do it here in just a moment. 
it did not pick it up but trust me the snipe was still there that's not going to change um but the the cutting the shavings are just a lot different and again that's a function of the cutting mechanism being fundamentally different in a helical um cutter head than it is on a straight knife so overall cut quality hands down the shelix is better i do expect that as i get more wear on my carbide inserts that there's going to be a need to rotate a few of them but that's some of the benefit of having a helical cutter is that if there's damage it's isolated to a particular cutter and then you can just rotate it and you've got three more fresh edges to cut with So is this worth the investment? Let me start off with some things that I don't think are important in your decision making. First is the noise. It's They're both loud. You're, you're going to have to wear ear protection for both of them. Don't let noise be a driving factor. Two is the power usage. Yeah, the Shelix is going to use a little bit more, but I don't, unless you're having issues with the loading on a particular circuit, I don't think that should be a part of the decision. Some of the pros of the Shelix system is that it is a superior cut quality. There's no question about it. Um, and you have a significant increase in cutter longevity. So whenever you do have an issue with a cutter, that issue, whether you hit a nail or do something to, to damage that particular cutter, it's isolated to the one cutter, which has three other cutting surfaces that you can access by rotating that single cutter. Some of the cons, the first and foremost is the cost. It is a significant investment. $500 is as much as the uh, machine itself and puts you at a $1,000 price point for a bench top planer. The other is the installation. It's about a 60 to 90 minute investment of time, but it may be beyond the realm of comfort for some viewers. So take that into consideration as you're making the decision if this is something you don't feel comfortable with that could be a deal breaker right there so would i recommend this i think that depends on what type of a woodworker you are if you're a beginner woodworker who is still trying to grow your inventory of tools this is probably not the best place to spend your money because it doesn't enhance the utility of the planer while it does improve the quality of the cut and the longevity of the cutters it's still just a thickness planer and you're doubling your investment for no increase in utility. So your money's probably better spent elsewhere. But if you're someone with ample means and deep pockets, and you value quality above all else, it's pretty clear that the helical cutter head is a good investment for you. For the rest of us, I say the real question will come down to how often do you use your planer? If you're a weekend warrior that uses your planer a few times a month, you may not ever see the economic value in this upgrade because a set of knives might last you a year or more. On the high side, the replacement cost for a set of knives is about $80. So you could buy six set of knives for a lower cost than investing in a replacement helical cutter head. This could be seven years or more of usage if you're just going through one set per year. On the flip side, if you're someone who's using their planer on a daily basis, Maybe you're batching out large collections of wood when you do use your planer, or perhaps you're someone that deals with a lot of reclaimed wood or pallet wood and you're more prone to getting a damaged cutter head from a loose nail, then maybe the Shelix makes sense for you. If you just look at the economics and you put cut quality aside for a second and assume the $80 knife set as we did before, the break-even point is anything over six set of fresh knives and it'll pay for itself. So like many things, I think my recommendation would largely depend on the particular woodworker and their situation. So that's it for this review. I hope that you got some value from it. And if you are in the market to upgrade your cutter head, I hope this offered a valuable perspective that can enhance your decision making. I want to thank you for watching this till the end and I'll see you on the next one.